Hey there YouTubers, All right, so in this video we're going to attempt to give you guys a basic overview of the differences between Z690, B660, H670, and H610. All right, all kinds of different variations in there. We'll try and keep this somewhat simple. There's a lot of, uh, you know, tech details that we could get into, really get into the weeds on this. Uh, some of those channels out there will obviously go do that, right? Now, you know, just because it says Z690 doesn't mean it gets all those awesome features of the high-end Z690s. Um, same thing with the B660. Same thing with the H670. Um, the one thing you can count on is the H610 is uh, not going to have, you know, the best stuff with it, all right? So, um, you know, right off the bat, if you're familiar with, uh, say, Intel 8 through 11th gen, um, what, you know, change that, that was some of the major things? Well, obviously with each generation, the CPUs are a little different, right? Now, when you're going to put this CPU in, you know, take this arm off, right? And then this thing used to pivot up here. Now it pivots down here. All right. The plastic piece that's on here, you actually have to take that off beforehand. So, you know, slight difference there. With, and we're not going to say every one of these, but with 600 boards, there is now uh, on some of them PCIe 5.0. Okay. So, uh, future graphics cards. DDR5 RAM, not on all of them. Uh, the motherboard I bought, if I remember correctly, is only DDR4 RAM, but I do have spots for PCIe 5.0, 4.0, and 3.0. Um, and of course, you know, 4.0 would work here, 3.0 would work here, right? So I think I currently have, yeah, I have the RTX 3090 plugged into this. Uh, in this position here. So let's get into this. Um, you know, one place you can go, and we'll reference this, that's that's really good, to be honest with you, and this just covers ASUS motherboards. We'll look at this in a little bit. This goes from Z690 all the way down to the bottom, all right? So I have grabbed a few select ones. Uh, obviously, you know, nobody in their right mind is going to send me free motherboards yet for this channel, right? Maybe one day they will. What is at the very top of the list, folks? That is your Z690. And what, you know, size is that? It's an EATX motherboard, right? So these guys are, um, you know, pretty much the same height as ATX or full ATX motherboard, but it's also a little wider has a lot of extra features on it and you would expect this has everything right so just by looking at this I don't know if they have any photos some of these we will click on the photos just so you can see it but uh, you know this guy is gonna have PCIe 5.0 if we can find it called out anywhere um, it does have DDR5 RAM capability right yeah, there's PCIe 5.0. You're going to see Thunderbolt. Uh, you may see, you know, the 10 gigabit Ethernet on here as well. Yeah, there's that. So this is going to have all those awesome features that a lot of you, uh, you know, can only dream of having, right? Because this motherboard, this shit is expensive. This, you're talking, uh, you know... Probably close to a thousand dollars. I didn't price it out, but last time I looked at EATX, they were ungodly expensive. Um, so we'll just go with that. Something like this is going to have a built-in I/O shield, right? Your cheaper motherboards don't have that, and yours truly absolutely hates um, any motherboard that doesn't have built-in I/O shield. AC. Um, so you see, this has uh, Wi-Fi, right, built into it. Uh, that varies from motherboards, right? Not every motherboard is going to have it. You'll see all kinds of different USB 3.0s. You know, it's hard to keep up with these folks. It's ridiculous. 
This one has different type C's. Looks like, like they said, they have Thunderbolt on it. Um, now for the motherboard itself, you know, you buy something like this, you're getting all this extra heat sinks on here, right? This, this board, you know, pretty awesome looking. Um, you know, is it necessary? If you're having making a showpiece, maybe this is what you want to go with, right? Um, I will never probably buy something like this. Now, if we can zoom in, which sometimes this works. Yeah, it doesn't look like it, the resolution is very good. But you see the standard stuff on all these motherboards. You're going to see USB 2.0s probably on this side somewhere that you can't see. USB 3.0. All your uh, case connectors, wherever they're hiding at on this motherboard, they're usually, you know, right in this area. Um, not shown though. Um, case fan headers right here. Probably usually HD audios over here. So this this motherboard is way different, folks. Um, than you know your standard motherboard. Now what you do see up here. And this is going to vary from motherboard to motherboard. Uh, in the past, talking, let's go back to 300 series, which supported 8th and 9th gen. Some motherboards you would see only a 1x4 uh, for your CPU power. Right here, we see that there are two 1x8. So, what is that for? Extreme overclocking, right? And, uh, you know, that's, that's for the super hardcore people right there, folks. That's what that is. And this looks like it has its own built-in cooling in here. Or not built-in, but uh, water cooling, right? So you would remove these and insert it into your cooling loop. Uh, looks like it keeps the uh, temperature up here. And there is a Type-C connector for your motherboard. So you'd have to look at this side to see all the stuff that is over here um, because the print is so bad. But yeah, that is that is the absolute top end right there, right? Now, like I said, you can go to this page, see all kinds of stuff. The nice thing about this is you can quickly go across here and see the variation. So let's just talk. Um, you know, we're not going to talk power architecture, but you could see that if you wanted to. DDR5, DDR4, if you just go across here, you can see some of the Z690s are DDR5, some are DDR4, right? We get to B660, you're going to see that some of them will support DDR5, some will support DDR4. Z690s again. H670s, I think every one of the ones I saw is DDR4. Now in the past, if you go H370, H470, H570, they were usually better than the B360, um, B460, B560s. I'm not so sure, folks, that that is the case um, with where they're headed. Now, in my opinion, they could have just got rid of uh, H670, made maybe made B660 a little better, or vice versa, right? Do we really need that extra one? Uh, I don't think so. All right, but that's my opinion. I'm entitled to it, right? It's my channel. You can disagree. All right, so everything on here, Z690s. Here's some H H670s DDR4, okay? Um, DDR4 B460s. Now, H610, I don't believe there's a single one out there that is anything but DDR4, okay? Here's another difference you're going to see. Um, RAM slots. Now, EATX, ATX, they're going to have four RAM slots. These are all M's. Uh, here's a full size. So you're going to have four RAM slots, right? When you get to micro ATX, ITX motherboards, you're going to see, you know, sometimes four, uh, sometimes two. I don't believe I've ever owned an ITX motherboard that has more than two, 
all right and I've had quite a few ITX motherboards but I always buy the bargain one so um, all right so the other aspect is your RAM it looks like 128 128 gigs is the max right so that's four 32 gig sticks if you only have two RAM slots and we just saw it a second ago your max is going to be 64 now most of you do not need more than uh, hell 16 right 8 sucks 16 is good I put 32 only on my favorite computers here and you know you can do benchmarks all day and see um, the difference between 4 gigs 8 gigs 12 gig, 16 gig, um, 16, you know, is probably that, that, that sweet spot, right? You get minor gains. Uh, you may not really even see much of a gain between 16 and 24. You will see a slight gain from 16 to 32. Um, if you're able to find, you know, dual channel RAM, that's two sticks of eight, two sticks of four, that's another story. But, uh, yours truly doesn't have RAM that's that dialed in uh, for the 4 gig and the 8 gig. All right, so now the other thing to notice, folks, speeds, right? These change with the uh, the best motherboards. 6,400 megahertz, 6,600. We're still talking RAM, by the way. All right, the cheap shit that yours truly will be buying. We'll be in the 5,000s, okay, if we ever can afford RAM that's that fast. Um, 6,000, 5,000. So looking at this, this row here, you're seeing all kinds of different numbers, right? Now let's go to the very end. Um, where are you not going to see those high speed rams that you can overclock? You are correct. When we get down to H610, okay? This is limited to the, uh, the CPU, so does that mean that a Celeron is going to uh, run at 3200 if you have overclockable RAM? You know, that's a good question, right? So I can tell you if we look up... Uh